Welcome back to the show, everybody. Oh, we got something lined up for you today. The SEC makes sweeping arrests, of which some include the first insider trading on digital assets. And we also have John Deaton's reply in the Amici reply brief. And I tell you something, the SEC has stepped in it. They've kicked the door open now. You won't believe what John Deaton has submitted for evidence and exhibit. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on TikTok. You can follow me on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook for exclusive content. Right now, one trillion forty-seven billion. Um, yeah, for one trillion forty-seven billion. The market is off by three point three percent right now. Good afternoon. It is July twenty-fifth, twenty twenty-two. Oh my gracious! Oh my gracious! You can't believe what you're going to get before you get out of here today, John P- Deaton. Woo! Boy, did he put it in there. We're going to get there. Hang on. 21,800 for Bitcoin, 1,500 plus for Ethereum. And number seven spot is 34 cents. Little old XRP. How's your fancy coin doing? That's what my people ask me all the time. Well, we're off by 5.34%, but I say don't count me out. This thing's got a ways to go yet, and we're going to bring her in for a landing. Right here, it's last chance. Last XRP drop ever. Hello. What is going on? We're asking the question out here, is retail XRP going away? Is that drying up? Is that going to continue? What's happening there? Now we see Link2 saying this is the last XRP drop ever. And hey, let us not forget, a lot of legal analysts out here are saying that the case could end as late as March 2023. How much longer can you get Ripple shares? Well, I'll tell you what, if you act right now, you get $1,000 worth of XRP, and that's going to end very, very soon. If you want all the details, click the link. Don't mess around. This thing is going to go like hotcakes July 31st at midnight. I'm telling you, this will not last long. No link to bucks can be used towards your investment for the bonus. That's how good of a giveaway this is. Don't mess around. Click the link underneath the video. Get accredited if you're not. This is your shot. Not financial advice, but that's where I've been, I can tell you. As a matter of fact, I just bought Ripple a few days ago. And now I'm going to have to sit down and talk about how we can make that happen to do it again. That's not financial advice either. But right here, great question, DAI. He says, how did the SEC allow Coinbase to go public with nine tokens that were securities being traded on the platform? The hell is going on? <laughs> I will remind people that the IPO for Coinbase was April 14th and Gary Gensler came in on April 17th. So there was an interim SEC chair in that window of time when the Coinbase went public. So I still don't know how it was able to do so. I think it speaks to the clear idea that we do not have clarity the way we need it. Otherwise, that would have been addressed before the IPO. Would it not? Gerber Graywall right here says that uh, we made some arrests with along with the Department of Justice official right here laying it down. Take a listen. So I'm here today to announce the unsealing of four separate indictments mm. charging a total of nine defendants with insider trading schemes that collectively generated millions of dollars in profits. The defendants arrested today include a former United States congressman, an FBI agent in training, multiple Silicon Valley executives, and an investment banker who worked at one of Wall Street's leading financial institutions. We allege that each of the defendants charged today corrupted the the integrity of the markets by stealing inside information or trading on stolen information. We also allege that several defendants tipped friends or family members with that stolen information so that they too could trade and benefit from an unfair advantage. So I'm here. 
There you go. You do the crime, you got to do the time. Make sure you're able to do it. I can tell you that's really what we're talking about here, folks. Uh, this is this is a mess, right? And they did cite in there, just as a quick sweeping overview, that they included the first ever digital asset insider trading uh, charges, which was really, I guess, uh, focusing on the Coinbase official that used to work there. So we'll keep you up to date on that. But they're just letting you know, hey, we're out here and we're seeing it. We may not be able to get you tomorrow morning, but we're going to catch you. Nice to see them doing their job. I just wish they'd do it a little better. Here we see another crypto lawsuit. These things are going around like Tic Tacs. This time it's Brager, Eagle, and Squire. PC law firm has filed a class action against Terra Labs and Dow Kwan. That mess has not gotten any better. I can tell you that. I lost money on that deal. Here we see Texas GOP platform calls for state's bill of rights to include a clause allowing citizens to own, hold, and use whatever medium of exchange they choose, including digital currency. Now, that sounds really kick-ass to me, but I tell you at the same time, I also feel like maybe that's because they know you're going to come in and out with a stable coin to the merchant or to whoever's receiving this. So, Hey, suit suit yourself. You know, hold whatever you want. I, I I don't like. I don't have a problem with any of that. I think it's good. I think it's a good fresh start, first step for Texas. And take a look at this: California to allow state and local offices to raise funds using crypto. Yeah, they say you know what? We'll take whatever at this point. Just bring it down here, and we'll put it in the basket. Yeah, UK banking giant Barclays invests $2 billion in crypto firm Copper. But what's funny is, is in the article, which I'm not going to read to you, he says, well, we're first going to start off, you know, in the millions, and then we'll kind of graduate from there. Be like, yeah, you're, you're in. There's no toe dipping with the banks and the crypto. You're in. Let's just understand that at $2 billion. Yeah, Ron Hammond says here this week in crypto very quickly here, because I want to get you to the fire. You know, he says, you know, th there's a lot happening on Capitol Hill, obviously. But, you know, he's not saying that it's impossible to get legislation done, but it is looking that way. We'll keep an eye on it to see if they can get something done. I remain glass half full. Hopefully, at the very least, we get some stable coin legislation by the end of the year. We'll keep you up to date on it. Here's the real fire right here. John Deaton dropping fire on his Amici reply. And I don't mind telling you, it is goosebumps. I'm telling you, just like Jay Adam or Jadam said right here, it is goosebumps. I don't mind telling you, it is straight fire. Shout out to Crypto Law. Shout out to John Deaton. Unprecedented is a gross understatement. And I'm not going to read all of this to you. I'm going to give you just some of it. And then we're going to get into the uh, the little clips I've got for you and tell you what I believe I'm getting from this. So obviously the SEC, I believe, has made a critical misstep here because what they have done is they have opened the door for John Deaton to bring in exhibits to be offered as evidence to the judge as a friend of the court. They have made a critical, critical misstep here, I believe, and it's going to work in John Deaton and 68,000 of us as favor, I believe, and maybe even Ripple. But looking right here, unprecedented, it said, is a gross understatement when describing this case because of the SEC sweeping allegations that XRP itself is a security. Almost immediately, this case was dubbed the cryptocurrency trial of the century. He goes on to say, if this court were to adopt the SEC's theory regarding XRP, it would dramatically change the regulatory landscape for the entire cryptocurrency industry. Now, see, now if the SEC hadn't messed up and tried to get rid of him, he wouldn't even be able to say that. But I'm glad they did because he does get to say it and the judge is going to read it. Although the SEC laments Amici's presence in the case, the SEC itself is to blame because of its unprecedented allegations. Indeed, SEC's XRP is security per se theory has been at issue from the very beginning of this case, as defendants correctly pointed out. The SEC included in its complaint conclusory allegations suggesting XRP is always a security and therefore that every offer, sale or transaction involving XRP is subject to 
panoply of regulatory requirements mandated by federal securities laws. And he goes on to lay out the rest of the case here. What I do want to give you is these two clip highlights here. One is under the expert firestorm, because we know that that's some of the grounds that the SEC was trying to use to dismiss John and all of us. He says here, it says, the SEC arm itself with the opinions of a paid expert from an entity granted at a multi-million dollar government contract funded by the SEC to support its unprecedented expansion of Howie. The SEC objects to my request to file a non-duplicative amicus brief regarding this one expert, despite the expert providing opinions regarding Amici's state of mind when purchasing XRP. The SEC asserts Amici should not be allowed to participate because Ripple shares a common interest and the proposed brief would merely duplicate defendants' efforts. Goes on to say, however, all the recent issues related to this expert would have been avoided had the SEC shared or agreed a then non-confidential report after I agreed to comply with the existing protective order. It was entirely possible that I would review Ripple's motion and do nothing. The SEC now not only objects to the Amici's participation in a Dalbert challenge, but moves to punitively bar me from participating any further. Well, it gets even better. Oh, and boy, does it. Shout out to Crypto Law. This is just an excerpt from today. Not surprisingly, over the hypocritical stance regarding the expert report, the SEC took the opposite position regarding the same expert with the different XRP holders who share the SEC's desired goal in an Oakland federal court. Several XRP holders sued Ripple, alleging XRP sales violated securities law. In Oakland, the judge ruled Ripple must produce all written discovery and deposition testimony produced in the case, including all SEC expert reports. That's a nice example. The SEC did not object to these XRP holders obtaining the same information sought by Amici, which they now are really objecting. In Oakland, the XRP holders already have the identical expert report. The SEC refuses to provide Amici only because, listen to this, only because the SEC is aligned with those XRP holders. The SEC's diametrically opposed legal positions is consistent with Judge Netburn's harsh but accurate observation that the SEC is adopting its litigation positions to further its desired goal and not out of the faithful allegiance to the law. Oh, come on in, John Deaton. What tell you what? Yes. Oh, and it gets better because what he did and this whole thing is straight fire, ladies and gentlemen, the whole thing. But what gets really on fire is the exhibits that John Deaton puts in to really explain this is why they want to treat me differently, right? This is why they want to treat me differently than the people in Oakland and the way they want to handle me is because they're mad at me. And he shows all the proof of the tweets of why they don't like John Deaton because he's made such a problem for them with the 68,000 plus holders out here and it also opens the door for John Deaton to go on and show that they're also mad with him, he believes, because we know about the Hinman uh, emails and we know that he is showing right here how he was told, William Hinman was told that he could not give the speech and the manner he was going to do it, all the different information that he was told about the money, everything about the having lunch with a conflict of interest, all of those things. He has had the opportunity to now share these things with the judge directly. Oh my goodness. Uh, the SEC has really stepped in it is what I'm seeing here. Look, I'm not a lawyer, but this gets very difficult because the judge is going to read this and the judge is smarter than all of us. The judge is going to know exactly what she's looking at here. And I don't think it's going to make her very happy to see it. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, what is it? You mess with the bull, you get the horns. 
Yeah, well, I'll tell you what. That's exactly what's happened here. They messed with the bull, and they got John Deaton is what they got. And boy, oh boy, is it just exhibit after exhibit after exhibit that shows all of the problems coming from within that camp at the SEC at the time of the ETH free pass and everything that was happening. I tell you, it will be exciting to watch and see how the judge responds to all of this information. And we know now she's going to read it. That's for damn sure. Now let's take a look very quickly at price and what's going on here. It says above from egg rag crypto above 38 to 41 cents. We're bullish chopping ranges in the 33 to 36 range neutral but good support which is where we are now let's see where we are right now still at 35 cents zero to 30 30 cents to 33 cents more bearish but strong support unless a major event happens like negative gdp fed increases 100 points things of that nature thank you egg rag crypto thank you john deaton oh to be continued for sure. That's going to do it for me. Check out all the links underneath the video. And uh, there's great specials and deals there. I'm blown away by this filing. It is incredible. I'll catch all of you on the next one.